Hello, two weeks ago I test drove for the very first time a Tesla Model 3. Now in that video I noted that the low speed composure of the Model 3 is excellent. Oh, it's very, very progressive on the throttle. So my Ionic kind of is as well, but it's a bit yeah. more jerky than this. Oh, okay. This is, and the steering is very progressive, that's interesting. Yeah. It seems a cut above what I experience in the car I'm in now, which is the Hyundai Ionic Electric EV that we own. Um, now, why is that? Why is the Tesla Model 3 more composed than the Ionic Electric EV at low speed? Well, I think there are five reasons for that, and I've come to this delightfully sort of post-apocalyptic looking industrial estate to explain them in this video. So of these five reasons, I think four of them, um, nothing can be done about. They're just design choices in the Ionic Electric that are different to the Model 3. The kind of fifth one, which I'll demo by driving around a bit in this uh, weird place, is software decisions that I think Hyundai could either have done differently, might do different if they update the software, or could do differently in future cars if this kind of driving dynamic was, was a priority for them. So the first thing that can't really be done anything about then is the sighting of the battery. So in the Ionic Electric EV, it's underneath the rear seats and the boot or trunk. Um, and I think that just doesn't give as good sort of dynamics as in the Teslas, where it's their famous sort of skateboard design, um, and it's just sort of underneath the front and rear seats, you know, very, very low down, so you've got a very low center of gravity, and it's not sort of tilted off in some way to, you know, the rear part of the car and raised up a bit like it kind of is in the Ionic Electric. The second thing then is the steering. So I'll demonstrate that a little bit here in the Ionic. The Ionic, it just has a looser steering feel, um, whereas in the Tesla, there's kind of three adjustable levels, I think comfort, normal, and then sport. There is a sport mode in the drive mode settings in the Ionic, but you can't actually change the dynamics of, of how the steering wheel feels. Um, so that, I, th I think nothing can be done about in the Ionic either. The, the third thing then is just the setup of the suspension in the Ionic, which I think is just set to some sort of compromise of comfort and handling in the Ionic Electric. And I know in the Teslas from many people that have reviewed them that not only in the performance model, but in the standard ones too, um, the ride is very firm because the, the suspension has been set up to optimize kind of handling and minimize body roll. So that's not going to change in the Ionic, I assume. Um, perhaps they'll need to do something if they put in the slightly heavier battery in the Ionic version 2 that's coming sometime later in 2019, 2020. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much going to stay the same. The fourth thing in the Ionic that's different from the um, Tesla Model 3 is the fact that there isn't really a way to turn off the creep mode in the Ionic. So the Ionic has a kind of single reduction gear um, automatic transmission, but it's an automatic, um, and it kind of mimics a petrol or diesel automatic car in that when you kind of let off the brake, um, unless you've got the auto hold selected, which I'll, I'll come to, um, then it just sort of creeps forward and there's no way to switch that off. And that kind of automatically gives you a kind of roll, you know, kind of rolling start um, that, that you can't really override. So, you know, that, that kind of softens the feeling of, of the very precise low speed controllability that the Model 3 has. You, you can't get that in the Ionic. So you can turn the auto hold off, um, but it's not the same thing as being able to turn creep off in the Model 3, which I did when I test drove it just to see what it was like to see how it was different to the Ionic. The fifth thing then, which seems to be a kind of software choice and maybe Hyundai could change it, it doesn't really matter, I mean, but it just, it did, it, it does give a different feel of this kind of low speed solidity between the Model 3 and the Ionic. So perhaps they'll change it in future, maybe not. Perhaps it's different in the Kona electric, maybe not. Um, it's the fact that basically the regen is blended between the accelerator pedal and the brake pedal. That seems to be what I've sort of narrowed it down to. The other four things, as I said, can't do anything about. But I think if that blending wasn't there, I think if all the regen was available just on the travel of the accelerator pedal, which I've talked about in the kind of one pedal driving video I did a few weeks back, I think it would be different. But as I'm going to demonstrate by driving here, um, there's a kind of fade out point of about seven miles an hour. Um, in the car. I'll check what that is in kilometers an hour because it shows it at the bottom of the dial um, where you just you can't do any more regen on the accelerator pedal alone. Um, you've got to kind of add the brake pedal to get a bit more regen. So I'll, I'll demo that while driving in a moment. But in the Model 3, it's all on the accelerator pedal at the low speed. So that combined with the firmer steering, you know, the firmer suspension, the kind of more balanced um, positioning of the center of gravity, the weight through the, the design of the battery pack, um, you know, that gives you the, the feeling, I think, of the low speed solidity and composure in the Model 3, which is a little bit absent then in um, the Ionic. And, you know, combined with that, the fact that you can turn creep completely off so you can have, you know, really, really precise low speed controllability in the Model 3, which I liked. I think it'd be very good for maneuvering. 
and you can't quite get it to the same degree in the Ionic. Although I do like the Ionic and find it very, you know, smooth and controllable at low speed, but the Model 3 is a kind of cut above. So we've got the um, energy showing here, which will show about the blending of the regen between the accelerator pedal and the brake pedal. Um, and I've got a GoPro set up to film that, and I've got myself mic'd, and I've got a, a sort of POV camera on here. So we'll set off. Um, so here, see with um, auto hold on, it, it won't move, but then as soon as you do move it, it's um, creeping along, but my foot is not is not doing anything. I don't have any control there with my foot. I've got to use some brake. It doesn't apply any regen, but yeah, it's not the same sort of. Bear in mind that the, in that video, um, this was about three kilometers an hour, and I still felt I had control on the accelerator pedal travel in the Tesla Model Three, whereas in the Ionic here, there's there's none. So, um, yes, yeah, so I'll turn auto hold off. Um, yeah, um, yeah, so I'll come to a complete stop. Again, no regen showing. Um, yeah, and as you let off here, the car will kind of creep. It's a bit uphill here. Yeah, so, but I don't feel like lifting off the accelerator as so I compress it and then lift off. It's still just creeping. There's no kind of controllability at that very low speed. The steering is very slack compared to the Model 3. You know, I can sort of wibble it quite a bit here without the kind of feeling of very precise uh, positionability which I had with the um, with the Model 3. Ah, so at this sort of speed, about 11 miles an hour, 19 kilometers an hour, 20 kilometers an hour. Yes, I can lift off here. Look at me at minus seven thingy here. Let's just do a turn here. I can kind of show that low speed at this one. I don't need to indicate there's nobody here. Uh, minus two, yeah, so there is some regency, but at about seven miles an hour, it's completely faded out or about 10 kilometers an hour. And now I'm just rolling. My foot is not doing anything. Um, and I don't really feel, I can, I can tap the accelerator a bit, I just don't really feel that there's the same kind of low speed composure that you saw in that footage of me in the Tesla store in Denmark, kind of maneuvering my way out very, very, very slowly at sort of, you know, two, three kilometers an hour. It's just different. And I'm making much bigger movements in the steering wheel here and having no effect. So I don't know if it's a kind of like, um, you know, like a, a speed adaptive um, steering in the Model 3 or something, or just that it's a, a sort of tighter ratio. Um, but it, it, it's certainly noticeable. The kind of different composure at the lower speed is, is noticeable. And then again here, so I'm sort of lifting off and there's regen, let me do that again. So normal speed and then lifting off. And yeah, but minus five regen, um, but then minus two, I'm doing seven miles an hour now, minus one, and I've got to sort of touch the brake to get that extra bit. Um, I'll just wander down here for a bit. Yes, yeah, so it's, it's not the same feeling, really. Gosh, this place is, is dirty on a weekend. <laughs> Needs a cleaning up. But it's, it's, it's nice, you know, it's much better than, say, a manual car where you've got kind of, um, you know, clutch and gears and, and biting point and so on. But it, it is very, very kind of um, different to the Model 3. Okay, so I hope you've enjoyed this video and the rather kind of surreal setting of it. And uh, please subscribe if you'd like to see more videos from me, and bye for now.